Are you struggling to find something to grow in a container on your balcony that's easy for a beginner? In this video, I'm going to show you how to plant peas and grow peas in a five gallon bucket like this one on your balcony. Welcome to Healthy Fresh Homegrown, the channel dedicated to families who are wanting a healthier, thriving lifestyle by growing food at home. Hi, I'm Mark, publisher of two gardening books with over 15 years of experience growing food for my family at home. And I'm here to help you grow food for your family as well, regardless of the amount of time or space that you have. So if it's something that interests you, please go ahead and consider subscribing below. Today's video is to show you how easy it is to grow vegetables at home, even if you only have the space that a typical renter has on an apartment balcony. Container gardening is also a great way for a beginner to get started with growing food without the overwhelm and maintenance and care that's required for a larger garden. So why peas specifically in terms of growing your first vegetable crop. Peas are easy to grow and they also can be grown vertically which means that you can maximize the space that you have on your balcony and not take up too much space. Us homegrown peas just taste that much better than store-bought. So let's look at what you need first. Obviously you need a five gallon bucket and these can be uh, gotten for free usually at restaurants or perhaps uh, catering businesses they just end up throwing these out or recycling them once um, they've used the food that comes inside them usually it's things like condiments and maybe uh, sauces and things like that that actually um, are delivered to the restaurants in these types of buckets so because they're food grade they've been used for food they're usually quite clean and the restaurants usually at least uh, rinse them out before they um, put them out. But to be on the safe side, I would suggest that you do wash them out yourself at home just with some soapy water and just use hot water if you can as well. Or what you can also do is you can buy them new from a food supply place or uh, even at like a plastic shop. Just make sure that they are food grade or you can also purchase them online and I'll leave some links down below in the description of where you can get them from. You also need um, a drill and a small drill bit to be able to drill some holes for drainage in the bucket. The other thing that you may want to have is a drip tray and uh, I'm just using an old baking sheet but you can actually go to just the grocery store and get one of those large disposable aluminum trays that you would use to let's say cook a turkey in your oven or you can also go to a nursery or garden center of course and buy an actual uh, plant drip tray and then you need some soil to actually fill the five gallon bucket with and basically any regular potting soil will work organic potting soil I happen to have here a bag of compost that uh, is left over from filling my beds in the springtime. So I'll just use that. It's an organic sterilized compost. In terms of quantity, you'll need uh, close to five gallons or about 18 liters of soil, which um, is a fairly decent size bag, or you can get smaller bags, of course, as well. So in order to maximize growing space, we want to grow the peas vertically up and not just let them sprawl. So for that, I'm going to actually build a very simple teepee trellis. And in my case, I'm using some bamboo sticks that I pruned from my bamboo plant, which I'm also growing in a container. The other thing that you can use is you can use twigs from a tree. So check with maybe family or friends or even neighbors to see if you could get some nice straight long sticks. They need to be about maybe four feet long or so, depending again on how much vertical space you actually have. Longer is better because then you can just cut them to length. The other alternative, if you can't find any of those things, is to actually just get some 
quarter inch dowels at either home center or perhaps you can find them at a craft store. And we'll also need a short piece of string to be able to tie the top of the trellis to. I'm just using some green yarn, but you can use just some twine or whatever you happen to have around the house. You can even use uh, thin wire. Or you can also use these uh, t special TP connectors. These work better on thicker stakes, so they might not work that well with the really thin ones. Or what you can do is you can also wrap around the top of the stake to make it thicker and then pop this one on. And of course, last thing we need is our actual seeds. Uh, I've got just some regular shelling peas. These are a green arrow variety. These ones happen to be good for fresh eating, cooking and freezing. And they're uh, also resistant to some of the diseases that peas could get. Although when you're dealing with sterilized soil and the controlled environment of a balcony, usually diseases are not as prevalent. So you could also buy seedlings and that'll cost you a little bit more and also availability of the types of peas that you can grow is a little bit less but uh, that's another option to be honest with you peas sprout and germinate so fast and they grow so fast that buying seedlings it, it really only saves you maybe about a week of growing time and the seeds you can get at pretty well any nursery or garden center or even the grocery store However, if you can't find them or you're looking for a specific uh, variety, then I'll um, post some links below on some places that you can go online and order them there. Finally, a few miscellaneous things. It's not a bad idea to put a label on, and I usually use these labels that I've cut from uh, lead-free aluminum blinds, or you can use a piece of plastic cut out of a yogurt container, or a container lid or anything that really is just waterproof and speaking of waterproof the pen that I like to use is this uh, garden marker uh, this pen is not only waterproof but it's also UV proof so this way your label won't fade in the hot Sun and I will also post a link down below to where you can get these pens you can also find them locally in a good stocked uh, nursery or garden center. And the other thing that you need is some way to water your peas. So a little watering can like this works quite well. Or to be honest with you, you could even just use a yogurt container or a cup or whatever you happen to have around the, uh, the apartment to then water your container. So as I mentioned, uh, it's important to drill some drainage holes in the bottom of the bucket. It's usually easiest to drill it when it's upside down like this with your drill bit and your drill and then you want to put about maybe five or six drainage holes in the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Oh and one thing, wear safety glasses if you've got them and if you have a drill you should probably have them just to protect your eyes. Okay. So I've done six holes, I've tried to evenly space them out. What you want to look for is just to make sure there's no plastic shards inside the bucket. So clean those out, use a vacuum if you need to, but as you can see, we can now have holes. Now let's fill the bucket with soil. Grab my soil here in the bag and we'll fill it in. So you want to make sure that you don't fill it too full. Looks like I have more soil than I need. By the way, this bag is, I think, 10 kilograms. So I'm not sure what that is in pounds. And you don't want to fill it too full. So you want to basically try and get it to about an inch below the rim. And that's just so that when you water, you're not uh, actually losing the water over the edge. And you will find that over time the soil will settle as you water, so always have a little bit of extra soil available that you can then uh, top it up with. Before I go ahead and actually start putting in the trellis and then seeding the seeds, let me know down in the comments below uh, what else you would like to learn how to grow in containers on your balcony, and I'll be sure to do a video on that for you. Let's make our TB trellis. I'm using these bamboo sticks as I mentioned earlier. 
Uh, try to make sure that they're relatively the same length. These are a little bit off, but that's okay. You can always trim them to length. And what you want to do is stick them in on the edge and just spread them out evenly around the edge of the container, like so. So if they are a little bit uneven, you can always kind of adjust them a bit. And they don't need to be perfect on top, but what you want to do is just bring them together, get your string, tie a knot around it, do a double knot just so that they stay together. You can leave the excess or you can just break it off. There we go. Now it's time to actually do some seeding. So grab your seeds, sprinkle some out onto your hand. That's probably too many, but anyways, that's what they look like. There you go. And so what we want to do, got a little branch here we don't need, is uh, go in with your finger maybe about an inch. And we're going to plant three around each one of these little poles. I mean, you can plant more, but I think three is enough because that'll basically give you nine. And then take each one, plop it into the hole, and you can push it down if your hole's not deep enough for some reason. That's another way to do it is you can actually just lay them on top of the soil like this and then just push down. This soil is very loose, so it's very easy to work with. And we'll do that. We'll do three more. Kids love doing this too, so if you have kids, get them involved. And what we want to do is kind of pat the soil around the seeds and firm it down a little bit, just so that your seeds are well covered. And that's it. You've just planted nine pea seeds, and very likely most of those will sprout. So if you find that one of them doesn't sprout or two don't, don't sprout, then what you can do is after the fact, just plop some more seeds in. Basically that's planting done, but before you get too excited, you wanna obviously water your seeds. And these five gallon buckets can get a little bit heavy. So you may wanna actually move it first to the place where it's gonna be and then water it. Cause with the water, it's gonna get heavier. So water a little bit. Right now it's pooling up a little bit because this uh, compost is very dry and you'll find that uh, compost that you've bought in a bag can be dry. It might be wet, depends how it was bagged. And you wanna go ahead and just give it a few drinks. Let the water soak in. If you notice any uh, peas sticking out, you can always kind of move the soil around and get the soil over top of them. So that's it. And then what we'll want to do is plop it onto our drain tray. So that as you water, the, any excess water will go into the drain tray. Obviously you don't water too much, um, otherwise you're going to overflow your drain tray as well. And the trick with peas is don't overwater. Your peas, if they're sitting in wet soil all the time, especially in cooler weather, they're going to rot. So one way to test to see if you need to water your soil is stick your finger in as far as it'll go, pull it out and see if it's dry. Now my finger is dry because I put it in the dry spot, but if I go to the wet spot, then you'll see that there's actually soil and a bit of sort of muddy uh, water stuck to my finger. That means that we've got enough water in the container. And yes, you can water all of it, all the way around, um, but you're mainly focusing on where you actually planted the seeds. And with the trellis, your peas will climb up. You may have to give them a little bit of, a little bit of help. In terms of watering, what you want to do is try to uh, water every couple of days. In hot, dry weather, this will uh, dry up fairly quickly, but you've got a lot of depth, so the water uh, will stay in here for a while before it dries up completely. So before I show you how to add a label and ensure that label doesn't fade in the hot sun and when you water, I want to 
take this time to give you a short uh, overview of Seed to Table, which is the membership for families who are wanting to grow food at home. There is a lot of information in there on container gardening and uh, mainly aimed at beginners because that's what beginners usually start with. There's obviously more information on how to continue after container gardening with growing in raised beds and in-ground beds, but there is a lot of information on container gardening and a lot of growing techniques actually do apply to both container gardening and to uh, regular gardening in beds. So a lot of it is basically translatable to container gardening and Seed to Table will give you in-depth information and support to help you grow food even with a busy lifestyle with not much space and not much time. So learn more by watching the Seed to Table tour here. Now if you're only growing peas in a, in a bucket and nothing else, then you probably don't need a label. You probably know that these are peas. But if you've got more five gallon buckets growing more stuff or you just want to have a nice label that shows off what you're growing and maybe the variety, then what you want to do is do a label. And so as I mentioned, I'm using these uh, aluminum blind slats. You can use pretty well anything that is waterproof and then I'm using this garden marker pen so I'll just write down uh, shelling peas here and the variety which is green arrow a little bit hard to write this way I'll write on my knee and the date which is I believe August the 29th and there you go hopefully you can see that throw that in here so everyone knows what we're growing and that'll survive just fine in uh, the, the strong UV light and obviously also if I get some water on it while I'm watering. And like I mentioned uh, this one should be available in most garden centers and nurseries or you can also uh, get one from the link that I'll leave in the description below online. So final note is on caring for your peas. As I mentioned as they grow you can help them to climb up the trellis by kind of guiding them along. Usually they, they will find uh, the place where they need to climb up on with their tendrils. The other thing is watering which I already covered but then also fertilizing. Now peas are able to like beans grab nitrogen from the air and use that to grow well so you may not need supplemental fertilizer and peas grow pretty fast too so they, um, they really because there's not a long growing season, they, uh, they don't need as much fertilizer. Your uh, compost or potting soil that you use also will have nutrients in it. But if you really need to, then you can check my video on liquid fertilizer to learn uh, how to use liquid fertilizer to actually water your peas in a container. So as you can see, growing peas in a five gallon container is easy to set up and easy to care for and uh, really anyone can can do this that has some outdoor space and if you have the right supplies and tools it makes it that much easier so again I'll leave some links down in the description below on things that you can get off of Amazon if you can't find them locally or you just want to shop online and if you have any questions about growing peas then be sure to leave a comment down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer them for you also be sure to check out this video here where I show you how to set up a salad container garden with tomatoes and lettuce that will supplement growing peas. So thanks for watching and good luck with growing your peas.